Hey guys, Mood JK here to talk about something different with regard to Trustmaster Reward Farming. This has been covered in a lot of posts, a lot of videos, but hopefully um, this will shed a little bit of light and clarity on you know some of the math behind the scenes, so let's get right into it. One thing I don't mention in the slides is that you should be doing the first Earth Shrine level when you're doing TMR farming. It's the two round one, it's a lot faster than the three round one, obviously, and that's the one you want to go with. So. All of the calculations are going to de uh, depend on doing that one energy first level of Earth Shrine. Um, well, I guess anything that's one energy really is what was factored in, but I recommend the first level. So, the basics for TMR farming that you know we need to know before we go any further is that each battle you go into has a 10% chance for your character in your party, for any character in your party, to gain 0.1% TM. So if you are bringing a party of five characters, if you're unlucky, then none of them will get any TM percentage. If you're really, really lucky, which I've seen a couple times, all five of them will gain 0.1% TM. So uh, obviously you want to have your party completely full every time you're doing this. In order to uh, gain the TMR permanently, you need to reach 100% on that character. And it turns into equipment or materia that you can equip. And it obviously stays in your inventory even if you get rid of that character. So let's say I had a trash character like Cyan. Got him to 100% by just merging a bunch of copies. And I got the Evade TM. Not the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, I might not want to keep Cyan in my inventory. Maybe I want to use him to enhance another character. Uh, I, w I could do that, and I would still keep that EM Evade um, materia in my inventory. So just something to consider. Enhancing with another copy of the unit gives you the combined TMR as well as the additional 5%. So if you have two characters, let's say one is at 10%, one is at 15%, and you enhance one with the other, you get 10 plus 15 plus an additional 5% for each copy that you enhanced with. So that would be 30%. So that's the basic math, and that'll kind of you know lay the groundwork for everything that we're going to discuss. Now, if you farm TMRs with more copies of the same unit, then that means fewer battles if you're willing to give up some of those copies. So, um, if you have only one copy of the unit, let's say you have one Zidane, then you're going to have to do an average of 10,000 battles to get him from 0% to 100%, which is obviously a lot. Now, if you have two copies and you're willing to get rid of one by enhancing one Zidane with the other, that cuts it all the way down to 4,750 battles instead of the 10,000. So already it's less than half. And again, uh, the reason for the 4,750 instead of 5,000 is because of that added 5% that you would get from enhancing one with the other. If you're willing to get um, use three copies and get rid of two, then you, need, you go down to 3,000 battles. Four copies, you go down to 2,125. Five copies, you go down to 1,600 battles. So... If you have five copies, um, it's obviously the most efficient and fast way to farm for it. Not only do you have more of a chance of any individual unit gaining a TMR per battle, but you know you can also get those 5% bonuses and everything like that, so that's the way to go if you're willing to give it up. And we'll discuss some of the considerations for that in a bit. So let me turn the music down a little bit here, it's pretty loud. Okay. Now, obviously, a lot of people don't want to be sitting on their phones or whatever doing 10,000 battles over the course of days and weeks or even months. So a lot of people use Nox or Memu emulator macros. Uh, what a macro is, is that, well, the way to set it up is that you can even record your own clicks and have it in the right places to, you know, click in the places that absolutely need to be done do it quickly, do it efficiently so that there's fewer clicks and so forth. Or what a lot of people do is they use something called the Blazing Fast TM Macro. There's Reddit posts about this, there's YouTube videos on it. From what I've read, it's 35 to 45 seconds per run with an average of 40 seconds, I guess. So using that average, in one hour you could use up 90 energy, and during that one hour you'd gain an additional 12 energy just from you know passively getting one per five minutes. So it would take an additional eight minutes to use that energy that you get. 
Um, if you were to run it straight 24 hours a day, no stopping, which is theoretically kind of impossible because you need to stop and uh, sell off materials once in a while, you could get 2,160 runs per day. If you were to run it all the way straight and you're trying to get a 0% TMR to 100%, it would take you 4.6 days, 111 hours. Realistically, more like five days because you need to stop, dump some of the materials in your inventory, so forth, deal with crashing. So you're looking at a minimum of five days to get it from zero to 100. Again, this is assuming no trust moguls and things like that. And that would equate to about 98 Lapis refreshes if you had a 90 energy character. So that's 9,800 Lapis, almost about 211 pulls, uh, which sounds like a lot, and it kind of is, but you know, you're getting potentially five fresh TMRs that could be game-changing, uh, single character TMRs. So, you know, rather than getting 211 pulls with dud characters and dupes, sometimes this could be a better use of Lapis. So if you're not a free-to-play player, this is definitely something to consider. Uh, iOS users also have the option of using switch controls, which is basically you telling where to tap on the screen over and over. And the problem, uh, the benefit of this is that it can be fast and it's obviously a way to do it on the go. The downside is that it's inconvenient a little bit because for each cycle of taps on the screen, you need to um, press the screen. So I might need to queue up, you know, 15, 20 cycles per run. And so I'm just gonna be tapping like a madman for minutes and minutes and minutes to get it queued up. Uh, not ideal, but definitely not bad either. I've queued up, you know, 50, 100 runs all in one sitting before and it keeps going. So that's another option for you. But most people are gonna wanna use macros on emulators. Now, TMR farming priority is covered in a lot of other places. Zis's video is really excellent. There's other things that are excellent too. This is just my opinion and I just felt like I needed to include it just to kind of make this a little bit more complete, I guess. The S tier that everybody agrees upon are dual wheel, Genji glove, and dual cast. Um, there's a little bit of a debate which is better, dual wheel or Genji glove. And my opinion is that it kind of matters on whether you have more good accessories or whether you have more good materia. I know that the optimal build for Noctis right now uses a Genji Glove, the 900 attack build. And that's probably because we have fewer good accessories in Global right now, and we have more good materia. So if you're using Genji Glove, using that um, accessory spot, you're freeing up more materia slots to use. So it depends on what you have. So that's, you know, the thing to consider, but they're basically 1A, 1B. A tier, these are the ones that make the most impact for, you know, bang for your buck. Blade Mastery for um, that you get with Chizuru, that increases your attack by 50% if you're equipping a Katana. Now, Sakura Fubuki on its own is not like the absolute best weapon in the game, but I put it A tier because if you're going to be using Blade Mastery, the only good Katana really in game right now is Sakura Fubuki, so you're probably going to be using the two together, so that's why I put it A tier. Power Creation, really excellent. Uh, Excalibur and Deathbringer, both really powerful swords. I would say Excalibur has a little bit of an edge right now because while Cecil resists light damage, so it's annoying in Arena, uh, this is going to be a really excellent sword once Orlando comes out and he's able to decrease light resistance and it just does more damage with Excalibur. So that's why it edges out Deathbringer in my opinion, but both are really good. Deathbringer is better in Arena. If you're not face if you're facing Cecil. Brave suit because we have so few good armors in the game right now. Everybody is still using black belt keys and you know, which we got um, ages ago. So black Brave Suit is a really good armor, good defense, good attack, stats, and everything like that. So that's why it's up here. Also, ribbon, goddess's protection, discernment, because status ailments are really annoying. You could have the most powerful OP character in the game, but if he's paralyzed or stone or blinded or whatever, you know, it's going to be useless. So like in the current event, you want to have resistance to status ailments at that final boss because he can completely uh, take you out of the fight. So yeah, that's why it's an A tier for me. Dark Bond is A tier if you use mages. I mean, that's basically a 50% boost to magic. So must have for mages if you're trying to maximize. And then Ring of the Lucii, kind of debatable, a little bit of a niche item, but I think it's really good because 
The evasion is really important in Arena. The countering also kind of refills MP a little bit. And then being able to put Alterna on, say, Orefia. You know, somebody who doesn't have the highest magic in the game, but because the multiplier is so high, they can still get max damage out of it in Arena. So I think that's why it's good for me. But if you don't do Arena, it's not quite as useful. And there's a bunch of B tier stuff in my opinion, but it depends on your situation, what characters you use. So I'm not going to list them all. I couldn't list them all here. It's kind of a judgment call. So <coughs> Now some tips for farming TMRs. I kind of alluded to this earlier, but just because you have multiple copies or even five copies or more of a unit doesn't mean that you always want to merge them all together just to get it faster. If the unit is fairly common um, and you only need one copy, then you can feel free to use as many copies as you obtain and enhance and combine all of them into one. So an example of this would be like if you had, um, I don't know, a Lud Mill or something else that you only needed one copy for. You could use all five in your party and then enhance one and fuse them all together into one and basically come up with one dual cast and you could be happy with that potentially. I would probably recommend two just in case, like for your healer and your tank. But, you know, just for example, uh, I'm just using that as an example. If the unit is somewhat uncommon, you might want to try to limit yourself to combining two to three copies into one at most. And it might take a little bit longer, but... It, it'll be worth it so that you can have more copies of the TMR. Again, using Ludmilla as an example, let's say you had five of them. Rather than, you know, enhancing one with four copies, you know, and turning them all into one to get that TMR really fast, you might want to consider, you know, using three Ludmills and two Ludmills to have two separate copies of dual casts because, you know, I mean, it's kind of common sense, right? So that's something to consider. And if the unit is rare or base 5 star, you probably don't want to combine it in any situation. Um, getting that TMR faster is not going to be worth losing the unit and losing the chance to get more of that TM. So let's say, I, you know, I have two Noctises. I'm not going to combine them and lose a Noctis just so I can get one Ring of the Lucii faster. When I could keep two Noctises in my party and farm up two Ring of the Lucii, it'll take a lot longer, but... In the long run, it's going to be better that way. So that's something to consider as well. Um, and one conclusion that I draw from this is that you should probably using your trust moogles on the single unit TMR farming, like the Noctises or Lunith or Gilgamesh is a really good one, actually. If you have one Gilgamesh and you're trying to get his Genji Glove, he would be a prime candidate for trust moogles because um, for single unit TMR farming, Every 10% Trust Moogle that you're using, you're saving yourself 1,000 runs. Now, if you use a Trust Moogle on something you're farming with two units, you're saving yourself 475 runs or, you know, 300 runs or whatever. So the, use, the, the usefulness of a Trust Moogle goes way up the fewer units that you are using to farm that TMR. So that's why I recommend doing it on single units. I mean... In reality, I probably used Trust Moogles on Sedans, even though I was using two or three, because I really wanted that dual wield really fast. Probably not the best thing to do, but um, that one's understandable. But anyway, you have to use your judgment on that. And I think that's all the tips that I had, but hope you found some of the slides and some of the information useful. I just thought it was interesting to see the concrete numbers, at least in my head. So hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.